holy gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Glory to you. Be attentive. At that time, Jesus went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, the Canaanite woman from that region came out and cried, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely possessed by a demon. But he did not answer her a word. And his disciples came and begged him, saying, Send her away, for she is crying after us. Jesus answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, It is not fair to take the children's bread and to throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, O woman, great is your faith. Be it done as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. So I set the timer for five minutes. Of course, he didn't know how long it was. It could have been 20. Can you imagine the immensity of knowing that the discipline was coming and not knowing how long it was going to be before he got it? That five minutes was probably an eternity to him. Because right around three minutes, he turned around and said, Dad, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I'm, I'm ready to do over. And then I had to do it one more time. At this time, I set it for two minutes. And right about seven seconds left, he turned around and said, Daddy, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I'm ready to do my own. See, what I learned through that is that we have talked about synergy with God. We have talked about how we work with God in our lives. But 
as we all know, we don't know how long we have. Some of us, we only have at our birth, and some of us die while still in the mother's womb. Some of us live until we're 90 or 100. Some of the saints I've read, 107, 110. Whatever the case is, we don't know how long we have. However, in my understanding, his stay of execution, so to speak, was extended because he was willing to repent. He turned away from the darkness of that hallway, and he returned to his father. He returned to me and said, I'm sorry. I'm ready to learn now. That's the thing that I now understand about God. He gives us this time. As I said, it's the most important currency that we have in our lives. It's time. Today we celebrate St. Ignatius, the translation of his relics. But today we celebrate St. Ignatius. If you've ever seen an icon of St. Ignatius, he is standing there blessing the crowd, and on one arm he's got a lion hanging off, and the other side he's got a lion biting, and they're both flanking him on either sides. But why this particular saint with lion? So he had fought against the emperor numerous times, and the emperor had been furious at him. And he did things and said things for Christ and lived his life according to Christ. And at one point, he was getting ready to be thrown into the lion to be executed. And somewhere in his mind, he was like, Lord, please do not close the mouths of the lions. I want my day to end today. And he prayed that the lions would not do like what they did to Daniel, where the angel had closed their mouth. And that day, St. Ignatius got his martyr's crown. We must understand that we do not have because we do not ask. We need to pray to God. We need to work with God in order for us to truly understand who God is. My son still does not understand me because oftentimes he says, I am angry at you because you are the punisher. And I said, but I don't like being the punisher. But at the same time, I am so thankful that I am the punisher. Because without having the punisher in his life, without, those are his words, without having the punisher in his life, he would do whatever he wanted to do. Because the choices that we make as parents reflect what our children do in the future. Even if they rebel, the Lord says, even if they stray off, if we have taught our children the right things, they will return to the Lord. Now, if you think about Cain and Abel, right? The first parents had those children, Cain and Abel. And when Cain slew Abel, what God says is, I hear his blood crying out from the ground. But you must understand in the Hebrew, it's not blood, it's bloods. And why is it blood? Why in the Hebrew is I, God says, I hear the bloods crying out from the ground? Not only did that choice that Cain made to slay his brother Abel affect Abel, but it affected all the generations that could have been through Abel and his lineage. The bloods that God heard in the ground was all the generations, all the way up until now, until Judgment Day, that were snuffed out because of one person's choice. Those commandments that we have, the Ten Commandments that were given to Moses that day in the wilderness, it gives us a set of instructions. Those commandments were given as a governance to the people. And why did they have those sets of instructions? Right? 
then sets of instructions were instructions between us and our creators and us and other people. And the fifth commandment, honor thy mother and father, typically we don't say anymore, but if we honor our father and mother, we will have what? It's the first commandment of the promise. We will have a long life on the earth. Well, I know, sometimes we say, I really don't want a long life on the earth, but nonetheless, if we honor God, no matter where we go in our lives, and if we teach our children to honor God, no matter where they go in their lives, we will be able to go to a place where God's will is being done. But how do I find God's will? How do I find his will in my life? Because oftentimes, our lives are met by other people making choices that affect us. Look at our marriages. Look at sometimes our parents, the choices that they make. Sometimes the parents make such horrible choices that their children have this path of destruction right from the get-go. And those choices that those parents make have a consequence. Now they can repent. That's what the grace of repentance is for. That's what the grace of mercy and grace and mercy is for because none of those things are set in stone because we work in synergy with God. And when we repent and we go to the Lord, we are set on a different path that may extend our life or it may even shorten it. We don't know. The thing that I have learned is oftentimes when people ask me, why did God allow the tsunami to happen? God didn't allow that tsunami to happen. The world allowed that tsunami to happen. The hurricanes, the earthquakes, the people that died. But oftentimes, those things that happen are because of people's choices. Or because what has happened to the atmosphere and to the things that have happened in our world the storms that we're seeing, the strange and erratic things that God has warned us about, all those things are due to us making choices. And oftentimes we're faced with a road of darkness. And we don't know how long we have. Because that road in front of us, if we're looking for the wisdom of God, if we're looking for Christ, if we're looking, we see a light at the end because even though Panayoti was standing in that hallway, the light was filling the area around him. It wasn't pure darkness. And when Panayoti turned around, I could see a sense of relief when I raised my phone and shut off the timer. That's the sense of relief that we get every single time, you should get, when you come and do confession. When you come and ask God to forgive you. Even when you don't understand some of the things that God is asking you to do and to change in your life, you must understand that everything that God does and says and all the things that happen in your life are for you. They're not supposed to be against you. And the people that we have in our lives, such as spouses that don't treat us well, such as children that rebel against us, such as a society that wages war against its own people, such as the world that does these things that we don't understand, all those things are for us to be able to look towards God and say, I am going to trust you. I don't care if it doesn't make sense. When I was, I've, I've shared this with some of you, but when I was back in Colorado, I was working for a facility for adult handicaps. And one particular morning, I was watching a news station. And that day, the day before, is when the Columbine shooting happened. And the Columbine shooting, at that time, the chaplain was there. They go there anyway, but they actually asked the chaplain a question. Why does God allow these things to happen to people? Why did he allow these kids to go in and shoot 
these other kids. And if you don't know anything about some of these shootings, it is that these children that have the gun said, deny Christ or I'll shoot you. Literally, this is what was happening at Columbine. And these kids, I will not deny Christ, and they died for their faith. He asked, why does God allow these things to happen? He says, when I was a young child, I was sitting on the ground watching my grandmother knit a loom rug. And that loom rug, that loom rug if you know what I'm talking about, was the rugs that they, you see them doing all, all the designs and they have the wood framework. He was sitting on the ground and he looked up and he saw the back of that loom rug and he said, Grandmother, that is the ugliest thing I've ever seen in my life. All the colors don't make sense. There's knots hanging out. There's strings hanging out. All the colors are odd and even. It just doesn't make sense to me. Why are you doing such an ugly thing? And the grandmother said, honey, come over here on my side. And when the little boy, when this chaplain walked around the other side and sit and with his grandmother, he saw the most beautiful thing he had ever seen. Because from her vantage point, her work made sense. Her work, all the colors were in line. And all the knots and the strings that you could see from the back were only in the back. And he said to this reporter, God is just like my grandmother. Oftentimes, we sit on earth and we see the hurricanes and we see the tsunamis. We see the coronaviruses. We see all the transgender and the homosexual arguments. We see all the arguments over marriage and adultery and all the things that are happening in our lives, all the things that just don't make sense. But if we actually take the time to step back and look at everything from God's point of view, it will all make sense. But oftentimes, we as human beings, we try our best to be Jesus Christ, but not in the good way. Because oftentimes when our spouse hurts us, when our children hurt us, when our friends hurt us, when our co-worker hurt us, the only resort we have is to also follow suit and sin. Because we need our voice to be heard. But oftentimes, if we actually just trust God and say, this is the cross that I must bear, this is the cross that I I must walk with. This is the cross that is God has brought me into my life, even though I made a bad decision in marrying this person. Even though I made a bad decision in sleeping with numerous people, having numerous children with out of wedlock, no matter what I've done in my life, if I go to God and humble myself and tell God I am wrong, he can fix everything that is in our lives. Even if it doesn't make sense at the moment. If we trust God, he will work everything for the good according to his purpose. That's why it's so important for us, no matter what we're going on in our lives, to look at God and take the time to stand on his side the best that we can and say, you know what, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust you no matter what is happening in my life because you are the master and the created the universe. You are the one who created me. You are the one who created everybody. And the only person, the only task that I have in my life is for me to glorify you. That is our job. Our job is one singular job. It's not going to the mine or to the police station or anything else. Our job is to glorify God. And if we glorify God in everything that we do, our lives will be complete, even if it ends today. Just like Paniyoti looking down the hallway in that darkness, turn around. Turn around and head the right direction. Repent, even if you don't 
want to look for that repentance, even if you're hard hearted and saying, I will never change, I will never forgive the person I need to forgive. That's what this Lent is all about. It's preparing, it's coming. We're in the Triodion right now. Because this Lent, the timer is ticking. You don't know if you have one day, one hour, four years, 40 years, 100 years. You don't know. And if you are withholding yourself from repentance, the end could come before you can say, I'm sorry. That's why it's important for to be ready every single day. Glorify God and trust him. Seek first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness and everything will be added unto you. And what is the thing that you have heard me say for the last three years after liturgy? Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Right? Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your understanding. And in all your ways acknowledge him. If you do that, what Solomon, the wisest man that ever lived, if you actually do that, you will be more wise than Solomon. You will be more powerful than King David. You will slay more giants than David ever did. You will conquer more armies than anybody else did if you actually do what Solomon asked us to do. Because he himself is going astray. But if he actually followed his own words... He would honor God. Today is the day. Start turning around. Seeking God with all of your heart. Quit being stubborn, stiff-necked, and hard-hearted. Not forgiving the people that you're forgiving, and are supposed to be forgiving. Loving the people that you're supposed to be loving and trying to pray for your enemies. I heard a great sermon yesterday as we were traveling. It said the only way that you can truly learn how to become like God is to truly and sincerely pray for your enemies. Sincerely pray for your enemies. And just like this woman, and I will end it here, just like this woman, this Canaanite woman that we read about today, this woman had courage to go up to God. She was not a Jew. She had courage to go up to Jesus and say, Son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is severely, not just possessed, severely possessed. I need you to help me. And what did Jesus do? <laughs> Oftentimes that's what we feel, right? God's not hearing me. He heard her. He just didn't respond to her. And how many times did she have to ask before the disciples said, Lord, why aren't you listening to her? And he responds to them, it is not good for us to give the bread to the dogs. And in the Hebrew, it's not, it's in the, in the Greek, it's not dogs, it's the little puppies. Right? It's not good to give the dogs the bread. And she says, yes, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. And it was at that statement that Jesus said, your faith amazes me. Go, your faith has made your daughter whole. You didn't even have to do that. This woman was so courageous that she came before God. Remember that oftentimes, our marriages, our family lives, our world is not healed because oftentimes when we go to God, we're asking God for ourselves, not for his glory. We need to go and do and say all the things in our life for his glory and his glory alone. And when we start living that way, God will hear our prayers. Amen. Amen.